Well, after that introduction, you don't know where to start from. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm so grateful to be here today. And uh, my name is Karis from Kenya. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I just saw, first I want to thank the leadership of the church for allowing me to be here and sharing the word of God. I want to thank all the elders of the church, the staffs of the church, thank you so much. The members of this church, thank you so much for having me and uh, I'm honored to be here. And of course, uh, Dustin and Tina, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Amen. Let me just with my uh, introduction. Um, I have a family. Yeah, that's my family. Yeah, I have a son <laughs> called Ayub. Ayub is a, a, a Swahili name of Job. So his name is Job. And then I have a girl, middle girl called Michelle, and another one called Lania, and that's my beautiful wife. Amen. So the boy is 16 years old, the daughter is 10, and then I have a four. Amen, amen. I uh, also lead uh, a, a church. Uh, a church, I'm a pastor of a church called Destiny Community Church. It's a church in the slums, and uh, I think they're among the most dangerous slums. Uh, that's our church. Uh, by God's grace, I've been uh, pastoring in the slums for the last come on, almost uh, 17, 16 years. Pastoring in the slums, and uh, I love preaching in the street, and I love preaching in the slums. I also lead a ministry called Count Me In. That's Count Me In is a ministry that uh, we do a lot of uh, school outreaches and reaching out to the next generation. Amen. Are you ready now for the word? Yes. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, bless you, give you praise, you give you honor. What a beautiful, wonderful time you're giving unto us. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here, Lord. Lord, I thank you because there is no day, no time that I have ever gathered your people in vain. Lord, I just want to thank you because today, you're going to speak to each and every one of us. Lord, I just want to pray, even as I share your word, pray that I decrease and you increase. Use me as a vessel for the glory and honor of your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And everybody say? Amen. So we're going to go to Kenyans a little bit. So I'll, I'll say praise God. And you, 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 just, you have, just say a good amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's now the African church. And um, yeah, an African church is a noisy church. And um, my today's sermon is entitled, It is Time to Advance the Kingdom of God. It is time to advance the kingdom of God. And um, I've, for the period of time I've been a pastor, one of the things I've realized is the enemy is very aggressive. I don't know whether the enemy is aggressive here on this side, but the enemy in Africa is very aggressive. I mean, there is no time he's wasting any of his time. He's very aggressive. I realized that um, uh, when it comes to other religions, they are very aggressive too. I'm, I'm a student, and uh, I've been learning the last semester I was uh, studying about the comparative, comparative, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, uh, some other religion, and I was studying too much on Buddhist, and they realize the Buddhist, their biggest temple will be in America. The biggest temple will be in America. So the other, the other religions are very aggressive. When we talk about Amer uh, Africa, Muslims, they had something called Abuja Declaration. Abuja Declaration, one of their agenda is to make Africa the first continent to be a Muslim continent. So, the, 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 the world, the, the, the world is very aggressive. The other religions are very aggressive. And that's today, that's the reason why today I'm just ca coming to challenge each and every one of us. It's our time to advance the kingdom. It's our time to advance the kingdom of God. The Bible talks about in the book of 1 Corinthians 6, 2, the Bible says, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Someone say a good amen. amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, let's go to our main scripture. We'll go to Luke 14. Am I slow enough to everyone can understand? Okay. You know, English is my fourth language. 
it's, uh, it's not my first language. Uh, my first language is, uh, uh, I'm a Kikuyu. There is a tribe called Kikuyu. And then after Kikuyu, there is a, a Swahili. And then after Swahili, there is a street language that's called Sheng. And then the fourth language is English. So if I, I miss some words, just bear with me a little bit. Yeah, someone say amen. amen. Luke 14. Luke 14. Let's start from verse 15. And um, I'll go very slow and uh, hope I'll not take a lot of time. Uh, we had a competition, me together with Dustin, whosoever had so many PowerPoints. And um, he had 47, and I'm lucky I won because I added one, so I have 48 <laughs> PowerPoints. <laughs> So Luke um, 14, verse 15, the Bible says, When one of, one of these, uh, those on the table with him had this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. This parable of the great banquet is similar to the parable of the wedding feast, which is in the book of uh, Matthew 22. But the different, the major difference, but there is a small similarity, few similarity. And uh, you understand that um, in the book of Luke, just before Jesus started talking about uh, the parable, on top you can see there is a time that he was, I mean, he healed someone on a Sabbath day. He was talking about, uh, he was talking about a brief lesson about serving people. Amen. But let me just, let me, I just wanted to just explain something small as we continue reading. Verse 16, the Bible says, Jesus replied, a certain man who prepared a great banquet invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is ready. Amen. In this parable, one of the things that you'll notice is talking about so much about the grace and the masses of God. Amen. Verse 18, the Bible says, uh, but they all alike begin to make excuses. The first said, I have been, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another one said, I have just bought five yokes, uh, yokes of oxen and I am on my way to try them out. Please Excuse me. Still, another said, I just got married. Amen. Can all the married people say amen? <laughs> he said, I just got married. Have you realized that uh, most of the time, the people, anytime the people who don't believe, the people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they have excuses. Have you ever realized the people who are called by God and they don't want to respond to the call. We have excuses. Come on. Someone say a good amen. amen. We always have excuses. I had a very good excuse of not being here and speaking. And one of them is, I'm not fluent in English. And that was an excuse. Amen. And every one of us have an excuse. And then I don't know the culture of the, the people in America. That's another excuse. And just think about, I don't know whether I'm speaking to someone who is here, that so many times you have been running away from the call of God. And you have a reason of running away. You have excuses. Just as applies with this, I mean, this men that who are invited, they had excuses. But the Bible talks about Bible talks about um, Bible talks about in the book of uh, John one, verse eleven. The Bible says uh, he came to that which was his own, that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession, and those who were his own people of the Jewish nation did not receive and welcome him. Amen. All the people. That Jesus, uh, they were, were, were invited. All of them rejected. And that's the reason why, I mean, and they all, all the people have excuses. And uh, that's the reason why the apostle had to turn to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are me and you. Amen. 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 
This, this, we are just becoming an African. Um, maybe some of you are preparing you. Maybe God is calling you to be a missionary in Africa. So, so you know, you know what to say. It's just anytime you want to say anything, just say amen. <laughs> Verse 20, uh, 21 and 22. The Bible says, Then the servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the street, allies of the town. Bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. So the house of God is never full. The house of God is never full. The church might be full, but that does not give an end for us going to the streets and reaching out pe more people. Because the kingdom of God is not full. Someone say a good amen. amen. Someone say a good amen. amen. And sometimes, uh, 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 first John, John 1, 12, the Bible says, uh, those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to be called the children of God. And sometimes, this is me, sometimes we we feel like uh, we don't deserve to be called the children of God. Sometimes we look at the messages, the things we have done. Sometimes we look at ourselves and uh, we don't deserve to be called the children of God. We don't deserve to even serve God. But today I just want to take you, and that's happened, I mean, it has happened to me more than once. Today I just want to share my story, and I just want you to see some photos. This is a place where I was born. I was born in uh, one of those houses. Uh, I was born in those houses where um, uh, when you look clearly, you'll see we don't have toilets. And uh, we had something that called flying toilets. So you can poop somewhere in the paper, and then in the middle of the night, you'll just throw it. So that was, uh, uh, that's, uh, I mean, uh, maybe that time I was among the kids who were playing. And um, when I was growing up, I was um, brought up in a very, very, very poor family. Very poor family. And when I was growing up, when I was, uh, seven, uh, when I was seven years old, I was going to eat the leftover food. You can go to the next slide. Go to the next slide, the other slide. Amen. I was going to get some food from the leftover, leftover trucks. There is a place where there is... Like all the waste, all the trash of the city are thrown in that place. You can go to the next slide. All the trash. Maybe I was one of the kids who was standing with, with no food. I was there since I was uh, seven years old. And I could always remember the way that I had sometimes to wake up very early in the morning for me to get the best meal. I had to wake up sometimes 4 a.m. Just think about a child, 4 a.m., just leaving the house. In a maybe dangerous community, going to get not in, not money, not clothes, just going to get food to eat. And then I lived in that life for so long. When uh, when I was in uh, the, when I got born again, I was still one of those boys. I was born again, but I still didn't have a job, didn't have food enough, and. Uh, when I was uh, a teenager, I, did, I mean, I wanted to go beyond having food. I wanted to dress like any other teenager. I wanted to a new shirt. I wanted a pair of shoes because uh, when I was growing up, I was not wearing shoes. I wanted to just dress up like any other child. And uh, when I was 14, I was introduced to crime. And I was a criminal in this community. I was... Uh, I was just a criminal in that community so that I can even dress, even look like any other child. But in the middle of all that, one day, we are planning to go and break a house. And then all of a sudden, we didn't manage to go. And then I went to a family, and the two ladies in that family told me, Kariz, no one was talking to me because I was like a rude, I was a bad boy. But the two girls were very bold. They said, Kariz, we want to go with you to the church tomorrow. And I was like, ah, <laughs> who in the world, a young man, who in the world can, I mean, go to church? I mean, and I said, 
okay. Because as long as you're normal, we don't mind walking with two beautiful girls. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I was walking with two beautiful girls. And I said, I mean, there was no way I could resist walking with two girls. And I said, okay, yes, I'll go with you. Where is the church? Because I was not... In my community, I could not go to any church close. Maybe they'll think I'm coming there to steal offering, to break things. So, I mean, they told me, oh, is a church in the place called City Stadium. We have to take a public means, like 30 minutes. And the leader of that church, his name was Don Martini. He was a missionary. He's a brother of Ronnie Martini. I went to the church the first time. That was the year 2000. In a 2000 June 11th, I was there somewhere seated, and the preaching was uh, going on, and I was like crying all through, crying the power, the power of God, the worship, the presence of God was like too real. And just because someone invited me for the banquet, that was my turnaround. You see, sometimes it is easy for us to complain that we have a lot of people who are in drugs around our lives. It's easy for us to complain. We have a lot of people who are sinners around our circle. But maybe they just need someone to invite them in the banquet where the presence of God is. Someone say a good amen. Someone say a good amen. Am I doing good? And uh, for us to be effective, we have to get out of our comfort places. I, I, I've been in America. I normally come to America sometime. And uh, there is a brother of mine, an American guy. I call him brother. He's close to me. His name is Chris White. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Chris White. <laughs> so anytime he picks me in the airport, everything changes. When I enter in his car, everything, everything is controlled. You might enter in that car, I think once or twice I have seen him putting down the window. The windows are always up. Everything is controlled. But for us to touch someone, we have to be ready to put down the window so that we can touch someone. When everything is in control, there is no way we can touch someone. Think about our houses. Think about our houses. Everything is controlled. And each and every one of us want to be in a place where we have control. But for us to advance the kingdom, we have to be ready to jump out in the places where we don't have control. Let's just go on. There is a, there is a slide, this slide. So the small houses in those slums, they are called bays. So a group of young people, that is their base. And one of the things that was happening, we are like a group of 10 kids. So everyone will go and collect any meal they will collect. We'll come and put them together or cook them together, where there's chicken, goat, pork, wherever it is. We'll put them together. And when you put them together, all the kids will come and throw their hands, whether their hands are clean or not clean, whether they will pick chicken or they will pick fish, whatever they shall pick, that's what they shall eat. And this is my prayer that we, as the body of Christ, will be ready to jump out and start fellowshipping with the people that maybe even we don't know who they are starting feasting the word of God with the people, even maybe we don't know even their name. Maybe we don't know how their background look like. And unless we are ready to get out of the comfort zone, we'll not be able to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And I was told, uh, I'm a student, I said I'm a student, I was told in, uh, in my classes, that every good preacher have three points. Hallelujah. <laughs> For you to become a preacher, you have to be ready with your, at all given time, your three points. And today, I just want to start my three points. Amen. 
And then after my three point, I'll be done and uh, I'll be out of this place. And uh, <laughs> amen. It's, uh, yeah, you've been out of this place. Hallelujah. You see, for each and every one of you, maybe this is so cool. I mean, I can see you're wearing t shirts. To me, I'm like, <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, let's just continue. So I have my three points, and um, I have prepared three points that will help us advance the kingdom of God. Because do you agree that it's our time to advance the kingdom of God? If you agree, say a good amen. amen. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. Yeah, that's not a good amen. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. <laughs> good. So. It's our time to advance the kingdom of God. And for us to be able to advance the kingdom of God effectively, three things are very important. Number one, prayers. Number one, prayers. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. Paul was encouraging. Paul was encouraging the the uh, Thessalonian church uh, in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, that to pray without ceasing. So we have a place, we have a, we, have a, we have a job to do, and our job is to pray. We are called to pray for our nation. We are called to pray for our city. We are called to pray for our neighborhood. We are called to pray for the sinners. Have you ever realized that any time we pray for the sinners, it's like uh, we are attracting them to us? Let me repeat again. The way we continue praying for the sinners, the more we attract them. So any time we don't pray for them, it's just like we are pushing them away. Because the best and the first way of winning souls is by on your knee. If you cannot win them on your knee, then you cannot win them by speaking to them. Amen. Our job is to pray for the, our job is to pray. And uh, one day it was uh, close to my church. I took uh, Pastor Dustin uh, in that place. There is uh, where I was uh, brought up. There is uh, one of the most dangerous places. And uh, uh, last year, December, not last year, uh, from uh, July, August, it was the most, most dangerous. Women were killed, starved to death. Men were starved to death uh, by uh, young men who were stealing from them. And uh, I was like, uh, church, church members, anytime they, sometimes when they come to church, they will be attacked by young men, and those young men will rob them. And uh, I, was last, I just wanted to experience it. I was going to that street, that, uh, that area, and no one is asking me. The, the young boys are, hey, Carice, hey, pastor, hey, bishop. And uh, they were so good to me. They didn't steal from me. They didn't ask me anything. And I'm like, I want those young men who are criminal in this place. And then I was just praying, like prayer walking in that community. God gave me a revelation. I've given you power and authority. And uh, he just opened my eyes to see how powerful prayer can be and how powerful worship can be. And I hesitated for a period of time. But one day I told my church, uh, church, we have to go down there, put a stage, have two hours of prayer straight and worship. I took my worship team. We went there. We prayed hours. I think they have never seen something like that. We prayed for hours. We worshipped. We prayed. We worshipped. We prayed. We worshipped. After two hours, we took our things and left. Less than one month down the line. Crime went down almost to zero. And you know one thing? That's just the power of prayers. And I just want to awaken each and every one of you. I've been in a, I've gone to, in this American, I've gone to prayer meetings. And all the prayers meetings have gone, all the people in that prayer meeting have gone in a mineral well something like that. I, th I think it's the right name. I went to a prayer meeting uh, and all the women that were there, they were 60 and above years. 70 years. They're the one who are interceding for the nation. Interceding for the, uh, for the city. And I'm like, it's not their 
only responsibility is the church responsibility to wake up and take their step and pray. Someone say amen. amen. Someone say a good amen. amen. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For our weapons are not, for our weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but mightily in God for pulling down strongholds. Amen. Amen. It's our time to pray. It's our time for parents to pray for your children. When I was growing up and I was a criminal, and uh, everyone, of me, everyone around was afraid apart from my mother, and I always in the morning when after doing crazy things at night, I will just enter in my mother's house and I will find my mother always in her bed praying. And she was not just praying, she was calling a name. She was not just calling a name, but she was crying. All she was crying. Sometimes she'll not even go to bed. She'll just be praying and crying. Why? It's just because maybe she was prepared that soon and very soon, I'm just about to lose one son. But God answers prayer. Someone say a good amen. I'm a product of prayer. If you have never seen what prayers has done, I'm just a product of prayer. Amen. 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 Say a good amen. amen. It's our job as a church to pray for frontliners of the ministry of advancing the kingdom. It's, a, it's our job as a church to pray for missionary. It's our job as a church to pray for evangelists. It's our job as a church to pray for the pastors. It's our job as a church to pray. You see, we, we normally live prayers for the people who are working in the ministry, staff in the ministry, elders in the church, the pastors, that is their work to pray. But it's our work, each and every one of us, to pray. Whether in a car, whether wherever you are, it's our job to pray. Yeah. Amen. Are we doing good? Yeah. The second point is give. Give. You see, one of the things that I come to learn that is very expensive his missionary mission and one day i was struggling so much financially for money for mission that was i think 2019 and i was struggling so much 2019 i didn't make any trip to us we were struggling so much financially and uh, i went to a church one of the biggest church in the city and i went to the church and i told the church please we are struggling financially can you support us to go for mission and the church was like, Caris, we can't support you for mission. The money that we have is just money that is set apart that cannot be used. And that's like 1,000 US dollars put aside cannot be used. And I'm like, we, need, we don't need all that. We just need something small so that we can win the next generation. And they want no. Why? It's just because no one is reaching to the young people because they have nothing to give. No one is thinking about the next generation because they have nothing to give. And uh, the African church, and the, especially the Kenyan church, it is all about, in most of the churches, is all about what can you give. So if you are reaching out to the people who can't give, then no church will be interested because they will spend and maybe they will be thinking about they will not get a return. And through that, we are missing so much as a church. Amen. 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 Let me just read a scripture. I, I, I just want to uh, 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 read a scripture. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 9, 6 and 7. The Bible says, remember this. Whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God love a cheerful giver. If you are one of the cheerful givers, why don't you say a good amen? <laughs> well, it's, it's a, giving is a, 
Giving is something that um, I think uh, us as Kenya, we are not trained to give. It's not like a, it's not in our culture to give. We statistic of, uh, I got a, a statistic uh, uh, two weeks ago that Kenya, in the, the statistic of the most generous countries, Kenya, we are number three in the whole world. We are number three. But we are generous in giving for the weddings, the burials, and the medication. But we don't give to the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Let's go number three. Number three is, uh, am I doing good time-wise? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, is everyone okay? Is, uh, are you all doing good? Uh, go. Let's continue. Number three is go. We just need to go. The Bible says, let me just read the scripture. We need to go. Look, touch your, tap your neighbor and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we need to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're in African church now. <laughs> so the Bible says in the book of Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19, the Bible says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Therefore, go and make disciples of all, not Texas, not America, of all all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me just give you a small statistic. Do you have my PowerPoint? Uh, yeah. So, this is what we do. This is like how we go to school, like literally sometimes we'll do two, three school in a day. So, in Kenya, we are still allowed to go and preach in the school. I'll just enter in the school give them the letter, and I'll tell them if they can give me, with me, together with my team, one hour to minister. They were like, ah, yes, you can come. So we do like every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are doing mission all through. So, uh, and we have some statistics here. So in 2018, we went to 105 schools. Uh, we sold 26,125 soul coming to the Lord. In 2019, 2019, we went to 181 school. We saw 40,863 coming to the Lord. In 2020, that's the time of COVID. We only did uh, three months. We went to 41 school. We saw 4,375 coming to the Lord. In 2021, we went to 204 schools. We saw 38,094 souls coming to the Lord. 2022, 2022, we went to, uh, we went to 214 schools. We saw 96,342 salvation. This year, to Wednesday to Thursday last week, this until Thursday last week, we have gone to 125 schools. We have seen 36,693 salvation. Our goal, our goal this year is to do 300 schools more than 300 schools, and see more than 150 salvation. I don't know how that's, I mean, I don't know how we'll uh, uh, reach that, but this God is faithful. Amen. Let me repeat again. God is faithful. God is faithful. We have been using an old van, a 98, uh, a van that was made in 1998. We were given by a ministry when they had used it and they used it and now they are tired of it. They told us, count me in, enjoy that one. <laughs> and for the last five years, that van has been doing wonders. It will break, we shall fix and continue. And one of the things, and uh, one of the things, and uh, just each and every one of us to know, is that uh, Jesus gave us a great commission. He did not give us a great suggestion. 
Uh, let me repeat again. Jesus gave us a great commission, not a great suggestion. Going, going out and reaching out is not a suggestion. It's an assignment. It's a commission you have been given. He's not suggesting to us, oh, we need to go. No. Someone say a good amen. amen. And uh, I'm done with my notes. <sighs> oh, okay. You're laughing. Let me continue. I'm just kidding. But I'm, 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 done, with my, I'm done with my three points. But my conclusion is, for us to be able to do all these things effective, the Bible says in the book of uh, Colossians 3.14, the Bible says, and over all this virtue, put on love, which bind them all together in perfect unity. Yeah. We cannot do all this without love. There is no way we can uh, pray. There is no way we can pray without love. There is no way we can go without love. There is no way we can give without love. So the Bible talks about a, a, a man, a rich, a very wealthy man, who was very education, educated. He was in the council of the Jew. His name was Joseph. Joseph from Judah, Arimathea, somewhere. And the Bible talks about when he was also a follower of Jesus, but in secret. He didn't want people to know that he was a follower of Jesus. And the Bible talks about when Jesus, after Jesus died on the cross, he asked for permission to go and bury him. And I'm just putting in my mind the way he was carrying Jesus on his shoulder and Jesus was dead. But one of the things he didn't realize, he was not carrying the dead because there's no way you can kill love because Jesus was love. He was carrying love all through without knowing. And anything we do with love will outlive us. Shall live beyond us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. God bless you. We give you praise. We thank you because you are a good God. Thank you, Lord, because love never dies. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to hear and to hear from you, Lord, today. God bless you and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.